Hey guys, and welcome to Craft Classy. I'm Carolyn, and today I have for you three clothespin DIYs. Clothespins are so cheap, and most of us have them already in our craft stash. These DIYs cost next to nothing, and they are so fun. Let's jump into it. For our first DIY, you'll need some clothespins. I got these from Dollar Tree. It comes in, I believe, 36 for a dollar, but at the at um, Walmart you can get them for 50 for a dollar, I believe. I'm sure every Walmart and Dollar Tree is a little bit different, but you'll also need some fabric and trim of your choosing and a bucket of some sort. I have this bucket here. I got, um, it had Play-Doh, it had a, like a little Play-Doh kit in it. It was from the Dollar General. Now you're just going to take all your clothespins apart. You'll need some adhesive. I'm going to be using E6000 and some hot glue. I'm using the table as a guide to help me um, place the halves of the clothespins straight and how far down I should go. I just use the table as a guide to tell me how far down to put the push pin. And on each closed pin half, I'm just putting a little bit of E6000 on the bottom half and then hot glue on the top half. And you'll just eyeball to see about how straight it is and you can adjust it. And it's no big deal if you get, um, if you end up with small gaps in your closed pins, it's not gonna make much of a difference on the look of it as long as they're not too large. The top of this bucket is showing, um, obviously the clothespin didn't go all the way up, but that doesn't matter because we're going to be putting a liner in this bucket and having trim on the outside. I found that um, some wire cutters on these pliers worked well to trim off the ends of the clothespin where I needed to. You could leave your clothespins natural. I decided to stain them with some watered down paint. This is Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel. And it worked really well to get into the grooves in between the clothes pins. I thought that if I used antique wax or stain, it would be quite messy. Um, and then it would be difficult to get any um, excess out from in between the clothes pins. So this watered down paint worked well. Now, if you have a handle, you're going to want to cover it with something. And I'm going to use some hot glue and just cover this plastic handle in twine. It doesn't matter that the ends of the handle are, are uncovered because those are going to be hidden down inside of the trim that we're going to put on our bucket.
for the liner of the bucket, I'm going to be using this old pillowcase that I have that ripped, but I kept it because I liked the embroidery on it. I won't be using that part of it, but I just folded it in half so that I could cut out a fairly even rectangle out of the bottom corner. If you don't have a pillowcase that you can cut the corner out of, you'll just take two pieces of fabric and um, glue the seams to make a pocket around the edges. You could do a rectangular shape or a rounded shape and really you'll, you'll just have to eyeball it and see what's going to work best for your container or your bucket that you're using. To close up this one open side here, you're going to want to leave the top open and not seal it up, but I needed a full pocket here, so I'm just going to glue um, this seam. And of course, if you are comfortable with sewing, you could certainly sew it. But for this project, I had my hot glue gun right there, and that worked out just fine. Now where the handle goes onto the bucket where it attaches, I'm just going to cut a small slit in the liner there so that later on when I go to reattach the handle, I'll go underneath the trim and then go through that slit to access um, where the handle connects to the bucket. I'm using this lacy ribbon that I had and it has um, running through the middle it has a silky type of ribbon running through it and I'm just going to leave a tail on each end so that I can come back later and tie a bow and I'm just putting the trim around the basket to hide the edges of our lining and putting a dot of glue every few inches to hold the trim in place. The handle is going to go under the trim and through that slit that we cut earlier and into the um, hole that it locks into so that that end is hidden and you cannot see the plastic. On the bottom you can still see that there is a plastic bucket under this and you could certainly cover it with something. I'll probably go back later and maybe Mod Podge some brown paper onto the bottom just to cover up that plastic. I just love how this turned out. It would look so cute in a laundry room storing clothespins. This next DIY is so quick, so don't blink or you'll miss it. 
We all have these plastic clips sitting around in a drawer or on our fridge, and I just wanted to make something a little cuter to replace them. I'm taking these clothespins and these magnets from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to glue a magnet onto the center of each clothespin on one side. You can leave them natural or I'm going to use this um, antique wax to give them an older look. And I found that it was best to um, hold open the clothespin and do the inside first. And then close it and do the rest of it. And I just love how this antique wax got down into the grooves and made these clothespins look old. Now when my kids need a chip bag clip, I won't hear them rustling around the drawers. They'll be right there on the fridge and they look very cute. They can hold pictures and they're just very handy. And I love how these turned out. I think this next DIY is my favorite. You're going to need a piece of wood. I'm using a small piece of craft wood out of this craft kit from the Dollar Tree. You can find these in all sorts at the Dollar Tree and I don't usually use them for what they're meant for but use the pieces. You're also going to need a clothespin, some glue, some ribbon or twine, And you're going to need a printout. If you're doing, doing it the way I did it, you're going to need a printout um, of your choosing. And what I did is I used an image of an antique cookbook. I'm just using wood glue and gluing the clothespin to the back of this piece of wood. And then I'm going to use some clamps that I got from the Dollar Tree to secure it and hold it together while the glue is sitting up. You can use the printout of your choice or decorate the front of this clip however you like. I've seen people do it to where it look, they make it look like an apron or some other kitchen item. I just chose a cookbook and I, I just searched for antique cookbooks online 
and got this image of this really cute vintage cookbook. I'm using antique wax to finish it and you can do whatever you like, leave it natural or paint it, but I, I'm not going to need to paint the front of it or apply the wax to the front of it because we're going to attach our image to the front. I'm using Elmer's glue to attach the image. You could use Mod Podge or any glue that you'd like. If you have any overhang of your image over the wood, that's okay because we're going to take the sanding block from the Dollar Tree and sand off the edges. I also like how it roughed up the edges of the paper a little bit and made it look faded and it just gave this image of this vintage cookbook, it gave it a vintage look. It looked like the edges of a worn book. This recipe clip is made to hang on the doorknob of your cab kitchen cabinet so that it, it's at your eye level. So while you're cooking, your recipe is hanging right there, easily seen. So you're going to need to attach a loop onto your recipe clip. And you're going to want to think about how large the doorknobs are on your kitchen cabinets and make your loop the right size for your um, knobs on your cabinets. And to just give it a more finished look on each end of the loop here, where I have hot glued it onto the clip, I'm just gonna put a button on each end to give it a more finished look. I love that this is decorative and useful. It's very cute. And I love how it's to hold recipes and the image is of a little cookbook. So it's very fitting. <laughs> 